people have mentioned a couple of times that they'd like to see a little video of the shop, get a tour. You've seen a couple things probably before, but I just got a YouTube channel started. Boy, sorry about that glare. And uh, we're gonna take a look around here. I gotta set this stuff down. I got some shear blades here. Oh, it looks like I can't turn the camera around. We just finished demolishing a trailer out front and haven't put away my tools yet, but uh, coming in the, the entrance, uh, you'll see that we have a little Arbor Press on the right. And next to that is our a lathe, Logan lathe that's been retrofitted to do seat tube reaming. And, and we don't do much else with it. There's a BSA on a stick over there. This is one of my favorite devices right here. This is my uh, fixturing table. Right now it's uh, set up to do BSA motorcycle swing arms. And uh, there's my another little work area here with a bunch of C-clamps. Have a removable rubber top for it that's real handy. And we just finished doing some grinding and cutting on some aluminum. And uh, this is a, one of our welding machines. There's James over there, neighbor and buddy, rebuilding his mountain bike frame. And uh, there's my thermal arc TIG welder over here. It's a 300, maybe you can see it over there, maybe you can't. But uh, it's a good machine, good old machine, We've had it for quite a few years. We do a lot of uh, alloy steel and titanium tube cutting as well. And we use this bandsaw for a bunch of stuff like that. And most of the aluminum cutting is done on that carbide tip saw over there. Okay, swinging back into the, the main area. We have some torches out today because James is going to be doing some uh, some brazing and silver soldering. He's got a couple of tool room lays over here. You can see in the background we've got a big old nasty belt sander. Not doing anything right now. We've got a horizontal mill over here. Tube mitering set up on it. We have another horizontal right over here that we uh, currently have set up for slicing the back of the seat tube. This big thing right here is a throatless rotary shear and an extension cord holder. Let me get that out of the way. And this machine is like a giant electric can opener. You can run sheet metal through it. You can put a whole sheet of sheet metal in this thing and just cut a circle out of the middle of it if you want, or any other shape for that matter. We have a little reciprocating saw over there. On this side, we'll zoom over, we have a power mat. No, it's not a power matic. It's a dual bandsaw, 14 inch. And this thing's been around this planet for quite a while. It's got a, uh, it's got a cutting schedule for asbestos, which I think that stuff was gone by the 70s. Got a couple of Burr Kings here doing our deburring chores. Got another bridge port set up for tube mitering. Got another bridge port set up for tube mitering. And yet another bridge port set up for tube mitering. This one's doing seat stays. The one we just saw is doing the little notch at the bottom of the down tube. And the one next to it is, like I said, a tube mitering machine. There's an assortment of two blocks. These are our, the ones we use most often. And this thing is kind of a universal device. So we have a bunch of stuff that goes with that, different toppers and things like that. These are my toolboxes. I call them the Dead Machinist Society because uh, they all belong to somebody before me. And uh, here's an assortment of tombstones, blocks, angle plates. Again, stuff that we use a lot and it uh, has to be close, close at hand. This is my little Prototrack CNC machine. It's a two and a half axis. We're working on a uh, aero tube track frame right now. And um, that's the C2, but I'm getting ready to do the bottom bracket miter as soon as I actually get started today. And this is my drafting station. I use uh, old AutoCAD on here, all 2D stuff. And it goes pretty quick. Um, definitely no waiting when I'm using that software, it goes fast. This over here in the corner is a mandrel tube bender. And I'm tooled up to, to bend 
at least one radius in every size from half inch to one and three quarter, every fractional size. And we have a couple of different mandrels in there. We probably have 10, 10 to 12 mandrels for the different, different size tube, 035 and 049 mostly. And then this over here is just a bunch of rows of filing cabinets where I keep uh, the inventory of parts. And this place may look like a bomb went off in here, but it's actually pretty clean today. And there's a motorcycle, trials bike. I like vintage trials and and I built this motorcycle out of a, a junker I bought off a of marketplace. There's a 20 inch bandsaw back there. We have a nice little Powermatic surface grinder. It is small. And we have a uh, old Grandpa Logan over here. This is probably the oldest machine in the shop. It's nice. And back here we have one of two Klausings that we have in the building. And then another bridge port that's currently set up to miter Yeti fork legs, the, uh, the, uh, the crown miter. This is a little bench top mill that we use for uh, mitering bridges. This has got a handy device that I, uh, that I named the Bridge Master. And you can set up, this particular setup is for, uh, for cutting the, uh, the road bike bridges for a caliper brake. And you could bring this thing down, make your cut, then you loosen this handle, flip the thing around, and you can miter the other side. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. This is uh, four years in the making in this place, and uh, we were pretty close by here, just across the parking lot before we moved into this building, so it's pretty awesome. And and I'll tell you what, we have some really cool neighbors in here that hopefully in a we can do an upcoming episode that uh, features some of the people that work here in the building with me. And uh, until then, enjoy.